Hi everybody, Rob Mize of Maximize Media with you today. And maybe you've seen some of my After Effects tutorials on creativecow.net. Well, I'm also making them available here on the Maximize Media YouTube channel. And I'm starting with one of the most popular and durable tutorials I've produced, the After Effects Waving Flag. As I said in the original tutorial, flags seem to be the ultimate branding instrument. And in this case, I think we've added a few enhancements that I hope you'll like. So let's begin by taking this JPEG of a US flag and bringing it down into our new comp button. This is going to create a new composition the same size as our flag. If I hit Command K, that'll open up our composition settings. I'll change this to waving flag and I'll change the width to 1390 pixels. And I'm doing that so I get a little extra space here on the side to create what we call a hoisting end in order to lift and fly our flag. I'll use Command Shift and drag this to snap it into position at the right edge of our frame. Now let's add a new solid and let's make it comp size and white and I'll call this hoist and bring it underneath our flag JPEG and take a little closer look here and choose my ellipse tool and select a spot right about here and use command shift drag to create a mask for our uh, grommets that we're going to add to this hoisting end. Grommets are the metal rings that surround the holes in that hoisting end where we attach the flag to the line. And let's make sure that's in the subtract mode. And then let's duplicate this mask using Command D and select the duplicate and drag it down to the bottom of our uh, flag here. Let's go ahead and make our grommets using the pen tool and with no layer selected we'll just click a couple of points here to make a simple line and that's going to create a new shape layer. Go ahead and name that grommets and hit UU to open that and let's select this shape that we just created and duplicate it so that I have shapes one and two and we'll use one of After Effects handiest features the ability to copy a mask path and paste that to a shape path. So if we open up these masks, we can select Mask Path 1 and use Command C to copy it. Come up to Shape Path 1 and use Command V to paste it. And you see there is our new shape in the same position, scale, and shape as our mask. Let's do that again with Mask 2, Command-C to copy it. Open up Shape 2, select that path, and use Command-V to paste it. And now our shapes are going to make up our grommets here. And let's go into our Effects panel, right-click, and come down to Perspective, Bevel Alpha, and add that effect to give just a little bit of dimension and shading to our grommets there. Okay, and there is our flag. Now, if you want to customize your own flag, I'll turn off the uh, flag layer, and I see one other thing I need to do here with this uh, hoist in. Let me come up here and use the rectangle tool and just double click that. And that's going to make a rectangular mask around our solid. Turn on our flag to see how far we want to bring this mask back. I'll bring it to the edge here, not quite all the way. I think that'll work. And let's bring this on top of our other masks. And we see there our hoist in. Okay, now for our customized flag, let me bring in this PNG file I prepared earlier. And this is just a solid with a gradient fill 
and a logo that I created there. And please, no comments about my shortcomings as a designer. I'm fully aware of them. And now on our flag, let's go back up here and double click our rectangle tool. And once again, we'll create a uh, rectangular mask around this layer. And we'll pull this forward right about there. And there is our flag. So let's go ahead and pre-comp this using Command-Shift-C. And we'll call this flag. And the attributes will be moved into the new composition. Now let's create our displacement layer that's going to drive the fluttering of this flag. I'll just use the same solid again and bring it over the flag and I'll call it displacement. Go into our effects panel and come down and choose noise, fractal noise. Go into transform, take off uniform scaling because I want this width to be rather narrow, a value of 60, and I want the height to be considerably greater. I'm going to make that 2500 and the complexity to 1. Now let's animate this fractal noise. Let's go up to uh, Offset Turbulence, add a keyframe, hit U to reveal that and hit O to go to the end of our timeline and I'm going to increase this x-axis value to about 4000. And now our fractal noise is moving across the x-axis like so. And this is going to provide the flutter for our flag. Now that is a bit too orderly. So let's go in here to Distort Turbulent Displace Effect. And right away we see that those orderly lines have uh, now some turbulence introduced to them. And you can adjust this to an amount that is going to work for you. I'll just stay with something like that. And I'm going to add another dimension to this animation here with the evolution. I'll alt-click the evolution stopwatch. I'll type time asterisk 90. Time multiplied by 90. So for every second in our timeline, this evolution value is going to increase by a factor of 90. And so there's the animation that's going to drive the flutter of our flag. But it won't work on this type of layer. We're going to have to pre-compose this. So again, Command-Shift-C, and we'll call this Displacement Map. And we want to move all these attributes into the new composition. Now this displacement map is not only going to drive the flutter of our flag, it's going to provide the shading and highlights for our flag. So let's go in here to the blending mode, and I'm going to change this to overlay. If you want to experiment with this, use the Shift plus key, and that will cycle forward through your blending mode options. Use the Shift minus key, and you'll cycle backward. I'm going to stay with this overlay mode, and I can see that I need these masks, the same mask in the same position on this displacement layer. So I'm going to open up Flag, and I'll choose these two masks that make the holes in our hoisting in, Command-C to copy those, back into our Waving Flag composition, and choose our displacement map, and use Command-V to paste those. And we can see that they are in the subtract mode and that is what we want there. Now to get this displacement to create the flutter for our flag, let me first parent displacement map to flag and bring this down in scale value to about 80 percent. Now to get our displacement let's create a new adjustment layer and again, I'll call this Displacement Effect. And let's go into that and add a Distort Displacement Map Effect. And let's designate our Displacement Map layer as the Displacement Map we created. 
and let's use for both horizontal and vertical displacement the luminance value of our displacement map. And I'll set these values to about minus 30. You want expand output checked. And there you can see what is happening with our flag. Now that's not quite the look we want. First of all, we don't want our hoist distorted like that. This displacement is a little more pronounced than what I'm really looking for. So let's solo our flag and I'll use Command Shift and drag this flag over to snap into place on the left side of our composition window. Let's unsolo our flag and go into our displacement map and I want to see both of those compositions, both the waving flag and the displacement map. So I'll use this drop down and command click new comp viewer. Choose waving flag and let's use this viewer lock to lock that view into place so that as we make our adjustments, our view stays constant there. Now the first thing that we want to do is uh, resolve this problem with the hoisting end. And I'll do that using, once again, this white solid we created earlier. And we'll use that to block the displacement in that certain area where we don't want the, uh, the flag displaced, where we don't want that distortion. Again, I'll double click that rectangular tool to create a mask grab these vertices and bring them back. Bring them back to about that point for now. Let's hit MM to reveal our mask properties. And I'll feather this a bit. And I'll also increase the mask expansion so that we don't see that feather on the top, bottom, and left sides. Again, let me grab these vertices and I'll use the cursor keys to just do a little fine adjustment there and get that just right there about at the hoist end. And this is a little bit brighter than what I want to. It's creating more of a uh, distortion there from the hoist to the flag. So I'll use color correction, exposure, and bring that exposure down. And we get something like that. Now we still have uh, a rather sharp displacement, more than what we want. So I'll solve that by just using a blur, fast blur effect, and bring that value up to about 50, and use repeat edge pixels. I'm finished with my displacement map for now, so I'll drag this waving flag comp back over the top so that it gets the entire space that we have available to us. And there is our waving flag. Dress this up a little bit. I'll put a perspective bevel edges effect. I didn't use the bevel alpha because I don't want it putting more bevel here in these holes created by our mask. I'll bring this way down. I just want that edge there to uh, give us a sense of thickness to our flag. That's without it, with it you can decide if that works for you. And there you have it. This is about where we left our project in the original tutorial, so let's call this part one and wrap it up before we go on too much longer. Please join me for part two of the After Effects Waving Flag, version 2.0, when we introduce some enhancements that I hope you'll find useful. Until then, this is Rob Mize wishing you happy compositing.